Hi, I'm Madeline, Metabricks Curator, here for part two of how the 1918 flu pandemic changed the Dodge family. Now, the flu had come to Michigan in October, and by December, things had really returned to normal. There were several resurgences of it over the next couple of years. In total, some 50 million people in the world would die. It was incredibly deadly. But of course, people returned to their normal routines. And for John and Horace Dodge, this was selling cars. So in January 1920, they went to New York City to go to the New York Auto Show. At that time, what we know as car brands, those were still men. So the Fords, the Dodges, old of Oldsmobile, uh, Chevrolet, they were all there at the auto show. So it was especially disturbing when one of their own, Horace, became ill from the flu but no one more so than his brother, John. Against all medical advice, John sat by his brother's bedside day and night. Now what made the 1918 flu especially deadly was that it was often coupled with bacterial pneumonia and John had suffered earlier in his life with tuberculosis, the disease of the lungs, so he was especially susceptible. So John fell ill his wife Matilda and two oldest daughters, Winifred and Isabel, came to New York as fast as they could. Unfortunately, John passed away soon after they arrived and the train back to Detroit was especially somber with John's casket in one of the train cars and his family mourning alone in another. When they returned to Detroit, there were some 300 people from Dodge Brothers who were there to stand sentry as John's casket made the short journey from the train station to the funeral home. Now, if you've ever met me, I've probably talked to you about the Dodge Brothers. I love an underdog story. And so I talk about them too much because I think they just did so many things that no one knows about and they really deserve recognition for all, all the incredible things they did. So if there's any proof that I am not lying and that they are as perfect as I say they are, it's that their employees loved them. The 18,000 people who worked at Dodge Brothers petitioned the family to allow them to come see John's casket when it was laid out at the family home on Boston Boulevard. The family was like 18,000 people, sounds like it's going to take a long time, so we'll give you a day. And uh, by 7 a.m. on that day, there was already a line down Woodward Avenue of people wanting to come and say goodbye to their former boss. There were other people who said great things about the Dodge brothers and John at this time. Detroit's Mayor Cousins said, in his death, the city of Detroit has sustained a loss which cannot be estimated. His character, I believe, most accurately typified the qualities which have linked the word dynamic with the name of our city. Detroit's industrial leadership is founded in a great part on the indomitable spirit which he helped to inaugurate in our community. Despite his endless activities, Mayor Cousins continues, Mr. Dodge always found time to serve his community. Detroit still needed John F. Dodge's aid, and it is with great personal as well as, as civic loss that I officially call your attention to his death. Detroit Councilman John C. Lodge, yes, like the freeway, said that John was one of Detroit's foremost citizens, a man who has probably done more towards the upbuilding of the city than any man we can think of. The Detroit Free Press said, this community can ill afford to lose John Dodge. He was a citizen who counted. He was one of the big forces in the making of modern Detroit. And there's every reason to believe that if he had lived, the next 10 year period would have been the time of his greatest accomplishment. And I think about that a lot. What would have happened if they'd survived? Another, Story that I love is that one of the last checks that John wrote before he passed away was to um, donate money to this um, fund to, to buy milk and lunches for Detroit school children. 
and the FDA actually remarked on it and said that the kids were doing a lot better, which now is like common sense um, that kids would do better with some nourishment and vitamins. So I love that John was doing these kind of small and unnoticeable things for the community and he was doing big things as well. Now, John Dodge's funeral, he had more than 100 honorary pallbearers and um, uh, sorry, Detroit factories, um, automobile factories, service stations, gas stations, not only in Detroit, not only in Michigan, but across the United States, closed on the Saturday of his funeral. I know this because when I research it in the newspapers, I get thousands of listings with advertisements saying the businesses that were going to be closed um, to show just, you know, one kind of last honor to someone who had changed the world with this uh, car company that he had created and with all of the other things that he had done. He was a titan of industry and he was very, very well known um, and well regarded. There were um, two people who were noticeably absent from John's funeral, so it's a good thing that he had all the extra support. Horace was still in New York, um, recovering, and John's wife Matilda also caught the flu and was in bed with pneumonia on the day of the funeral. Now, a few months after, uh, Horace said that he didn't think he'd be able to live without his brother, and he was sadly right. Horace died within the year. He died in December of 1920. And Dodge Brothers, um, with their new leader, Frederick Haynes, who'd been a, a very longtime friend and co-worker of John and Horace, as he took over, he and all of the Dodge Brothers employees were in agreement that they were going to continue on in the spirit of the Dodge Brothers with the same kind of sense of community and ingenuity and family um, and just do everything that they could for the company. And that has to be the second reason, besides the Dodge Brothers, that the Dodge Company continues to this day. Because when they started in 1914, there were 65 other car companies that opened that year. And then both brothers died six years later in 1920. So it's incredible that of those 65 companies, even with both of the brothers dying, that Dodge Brothers is the only one to survive to this day. And it's just a testament to them and to everyone who was inspired by them. And if there's one kind of positive way I can leave this um, video is that you should write about what you're experiencing right now and have your kids write or draw what they're experiencing. Unfortunately, there were no Dodge Diaries um, for me to look back on, but I am positive that in another 100 years, there's gonna be a historian just like me who is going to want to tell these stories to the next generation.